Zaz Brooks here again, closing out RoboSub 15. All those long days of testing and sleepless nights of coding come down to this, a single 20 minute finals run. The Spaywar Transdeck facility here in San Diego was divided into two parts. The competition side was reconfigured for the finals, while the training side hosted a last ditch gladiator challenge to give teams who didn't get into the finals one more chance to earn enough points for a single wildcard slot. The judges weren't gonna give anyone any shortcuts into the finals though, they set a tough minimum points threshold. Although many teams tried, none quite managed to exceed it, leaving us with the original six finals teams. They got one morning practice session before the course was reset, and then the games began. Most of the finals teams would have done well to beware the Ides of Transdeck, as bad luck plagued almost everyone on the last day of competition. The University of Maryland constantly needed to adjust their mission goals as they struggled to maintain a consistent heading. Even a hydrophone run for the pingers was thwarted, as they needed to skirt around the transdeck shelf in order to get a good signal, instead of crossing the deep water Rubicon. Over at the pool edge, magnetic anomalies kept turning them into the wall, holding them to sixth place and a prize of $1,000. Vladivostok's Far Eastern Federal University was also forced to squander precious time on multiple runs. Despite their flawless hydrophone prowess in qualifying, when it came to the finals, they never got a chance to demonstrate their ballista-like ability to lay siege to the Imperial Palace. Nevertheless, they captured fifth place and raided the treasury of $1,000, a spectacular achievement for a first-time team. Caesar can be picky about his grapes, and Harbin Engineering University spent the morning improvising a unique rake attachment to the nose of their robot that looked like it might even peel them before feeding them to him. Unfortunately, they didn't get to find out, as they too had trouble requiring multiple runs. As the robot approached the weapons bins, it seemed to become a conscientious objector to gladiatorial combat and staged a sit-in on the bottom of the pool. Despite their robot's rebellion, the team was awarded fourth place and $1,000. Not wishing to rest on their laurels, reigning champions ETS Team Sonya entered the watery Coliseum determined to defend their honor. The robot performed well on the buoys, but missed the obstacle and required a restart. After dropping two markers at the Gladiator Arena, a bad waypoint spared Caesar from Brutus's blade. En route to the palace, the sub may have confused motor noise for the pinger, it surfaced in empty water, salvaging third place for the Canadians and $3,000. All the teams that made it today are really, really strong. Uh, everyone could have pulled a really good run at any time. So basically, it's just a matter of who has made the, uh, the most practice and is the most reliable on everything. So I guess that we still have some work to do. <laughs> the University of Florida's subjugator advanced through the water like a marching legion, putting the buoys to the sword before seeming to have trouble pillaging the path markers. They restarted with a reduced mission plan, hitting the bins and firing a torpedo, which caused the pneumatic valve to stick open, bleeding off precious air. They had enough gas to grasp the wreath and demand a pinger switch, but the bubble stopped and the sub surfaced outside the palace for second place and $4,000. After we grab it the first time, um, we were supposed to tell Dave to switch the ping, but we forgot to do that. But uh, it wouldn't have been able to drop it anyways, so it, it doesn't really matter. Parading triumphantly into the last slot of the day, Cornell University nailed it like a crucifixion. The robot skewered both buoys, dropped markers at the Gladiator Arena, stabbed Caesar from both sides, and fed the Emperor the vertical grape. Neptune smiled upon it as it swam to the Imperial Palace, picked up the wreath, called for a pinger switch, and deposited the laurels neatly onto the others before servicing with a victory spin. They came, they saw, and they conquered first place covered themselves in gold to the tune of $8,000. We're thrilled with that run. That's pretty much the best thing we could have asked for today. Uh, it took a lot of work, and we couldn't have done it without the whole team. So, and I'd like to say also thank you to everyone at the competition who's been so supportive, um, and congratulations to all of the teams who ran today. Uh, everyone did great. Judges' discretionary awards of $500 each were awarded to four teams. The victor of the morning's Gladiator Challenge was declared to be the University of Central Florida. For stellar performance as a first-year team, the Best New Entry Award went to Far Eastern Federal University from Russia. For impressing even veteran competitors with their modular design, the Vehicle Craftsmanship Award was given to Melodalen University from Sweden. For excellence in technical presentation, the Best Team in Static Judging was awarded to Cornell University. 
and this year's winner of the San Diego Mayor's Cup for Outreach, the San Diego City College. Now the pool is deserted, the pingers are silenced, and the party is underway. At last, the students get a chance to kick back and relax. Relax and talk robots, of course. You know they'll be discussing the finals results and sharing ideas for next year. And so can you. Check out the Intent to Compete forms at robosub.org and join the conversation at robonation.org. Zoz Brooks signing out from RoboSub 15. See you next time. Oh!